In this video, I'll be covering how to use something called IMM brushes or insert multi-mesh brushes. These brushes will give you the ability to use pre-built meshes to very quickly and easily add these to a mesh and speed up your artistic workflow. With the combination of IMM brushes and using Dynamesh, we can add as many parts and pieces as we like and simply re-Dynamesh the surface to weld these parts together and give you a jump start without having the need to sculpt something completely from scratch. In this demonstration, I'll be using Dynamesh and basic ZBrush core navigation. Take note that I will also be using Symmetry and will be adding parts to both sides of the mesh during the demonstration. If you're unfamiliar with these features, I recommend you check out our videos on zclassroom.com that will properly demonstrate how to use these features before watching this tutorial. To start off, I'm going to make sure that I have a base Dynamesh project to build on top of, so let's navigate to the Lightbox palette by pressing the Lightbox button here, and I'll double click on the Dynamesh 128 Sphere project to load it. If you're still relatively new to ZBrush Core, you've probably started to explore the brush library to see what brush options you have available. So let's open up the brush palette by clicking on the brush icon here. And within the brush palette, we have a selection of our individual core sculpting brushes, such as the clay buildup brush, standard brush, move brush, and more. These are individual brushes, and each of these brushes has custom settings for different sculpting effects on the surface. Also in the brush palette, you can see we have three IMM brushes. Each of these IMM brushes is a little different than the other single sculpting brushes because they have multiple parts that exist within the IMM brush in a separate menu. If I hover over each one, you can see that each one has a different preview icon which is displaying what is inside of each IMM brush. For this example, I'll select the IMM B Parts brush which stands for Body Parts. Now that I have that IMM brush selected, we now need to open up the brush menu to view and select the parts. To open up the IMM brush menu, press the M key on the keyboard to open up the IMM body parts menu. Here you can see we have a whole selection of different pre-built body parts. By clicking on any one of these, I can now use this part to very easily add this to the mesh on my canvas. Once you've selected a part, to add it to the mesh, simply hover your cursor over your mesh and click and drag downwards to scale up the mesh. Once you've scaled your part out to the desired size, let go of your cursor. The IMM brushes do a great job of adding the selected brush part close to the mesh from the origin point of where we've drawn the mesh. However, depending on the way the insert mesh part is created, some inserts may not intersect and will sit further away from the surface. When using these brushes, the ultimate goal in this workflow is to add the parts we need to speed up our workflow and eventually re-dynamesh the surface to weld these parts together and then continue to sculpt on the entire surface. To do this, first I must clear the mask. Each time we draw an insert mesh on the surface, ZBrush Core will apply a mask to the underlying surface. To clear the mask, press and hold Control or Command on the keyboard and drag your cursor on the canvas and let go to clear the mask. With the mask cleared, to re dynamesh the surface, we need to apply the exact same action as clearing the mask, so again, press and hold Control or Command on the keyboard, drag your cursor on the canvas, and let go. And Dynamesh will now weld the two meshes together. As you can see, when there's a bit of distance between the two meshes, Dynamesh cannot weld the two surfaces together properly and will cause issues when sculpting on the surfaces. If you want to bring the mesh closer to the surface, you have a couple easy options to better position and move this mesh around before we actually apply the Dynamesh process. First, I'll press Ctrl Z or Command Z to undo those actions before Dynameshing the surface. The first option we have to position would be to use the Move Brush to push and pull the inserted mesh into the sphere's surface. Let's use the Move Brush by clicking on the brush palette and clicking the Move Brush. I can change the move brush draw size larger or smaller by clicking and dragging on the draw size slider here. A quicker method to do this is by selecting the S key on the keyboard, which will open up the draw size slider wherever my cursor is placed on the canvas. And clicking on the slider control to change the draw size very quickly. Once the mesh is intersecting with the surface, we can now clear the mask and apply the Dynamesh process 
to weld these two together and continue sculpting on the new clean surface. Each time we add a part from an IMM brush, it will automatically add a mask to the original surface we are building on top of, which is signified by the dark gray coloring on the mesh. With this mask applied, this allows us to move this part around without affecting the underlying mesh shape, which makes it very easy to adjust the shapes independently. One possible issue you may have using this method with the move brush, especially if you're just becoming familiar with digital sculpting and modeling, is having a hard time maintaining the original insert mesh shape as we're distorting the mesh as we continue to move this around. In the next video, I'll discuss using something called the 3D gyro to allow us to position the insert mesh pieces without distorting them with our sculpting brushes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.